so in this sushant singh rajput case uh, if the if the girlfriend was at risk from him yeah. then that would be that logic of a third party being protected from risk by harm from the patient law the mental health care act uh, has a lot of penalties you know financial penalties as well as uh, right. six months of imprisonment so thank you dr bathare for joining us um i first like to ask you uh, just to take us through what doctor patient confidentiality is uh, what the purpose of such a clause is uh, of such an agreement is really okay well the the purpose is very clear when people uh, uh, tell information to their doctors they are uh, telling them uh, because it might help the doctor decide their treatment and when that is happening there might be information that they are revealing to their doctors which they do not want revealed to anybody else uh, and so the doctor patient confidentiality clause is also a way of ensuring that uh, people uh, feel comfortable uh revealing everything to their doctors and confidentiality uh, rules with other professions i mean they are called slightly different but for example uh, lawyers have something which is called as privileged communication mm. so you know basically a court cannot for example even ask a lawyer to reveal uh, details of what they might have discussed with their clients mm. uh so all of these uh, all of the professions tend to have these codes of confidentiality uh they are to ensure that you are able to engage with the professional very transparently without having to worry that, that anything you tell the professional might get out into the public domain so what would the implications be then of breaking confidentiality like in india for example if you break the law the mental health care act uh, has a lot of penalties you know financial penalties as well as uh, right. six months of imprisonment so that is very uh, clear that that is a penalty a professional organization and professional guilds or regulatory bodies also see that very uh, poorly and so along with that you might even lose your license to practice as a mental health professional mm -hmm. so you know you could you could face all three things the you lose your license to practice or you are suspended for some period from practice you might get a financial penalty and or you might also end up in prison okay. uh, so it's it's regarded as a serious enough offense there are exceptions to that confidentiality uh confidentiality rules uh, but those exceptions are very limited and again those are something that over years has been accepted as something that is acceptable for mental health professionals to do for example if you are asked by a court of law to hand over the medical records then you would probably you have to do that uh there are also there's also a clause which says like you know in public interest uh so for example if you felt that somebody else might be at risk uh then uh, there is a, a responsibility it's not a right it's a responsibility that you actually warn those people so warning third parties you know is something that the law says well when you do that that's fine you still break confidential the notion of public interest or third party interest has always been on the basis that the person concerned is at risk to someone else so you know if you had a client who say was homicidal or who told you of some plans that they might have to kill someone or in those circumstances breaking that confidentiality uh, and letting the police authorities know for example would not be regarded as a breach of confidentiality yeah. or if if you if you knew for sure that somebody was suicidal actively suicidal Mm -hmm. and you felt that they might kill themselves then again breaching that confidentiality would not be uh, would not be regarded as a breach of the confidentiality law you know mm -hmm. so in this sushant singh rajput case uh, if the if the girlfriend was at risk from him yeah. then that would be that logic of a third party being protected from risk by harm from the patient but that's what this is about this is talking about protection of the third party from the from the public 
Right, right. It's the public who are hounding her. Mm-hmm. It's not the person who's hounding her. And now that is a different logic of uh, public interest or protection, uh, which really is something that needs to be tested because what really, as I see it, is that is a law and order issue. That's a law enforcement issue. Public interest does not mean public's voyeuristic interest. That is not what public interest, the phrase public interest does not mean, oh, public has a lot of interest in it, so we should tell them what it is. Public interest means something completely different. If you're going to violate an individual's confidentiality, then you have to be able to really say that that person is now a risk to the public. Right, right. Uh, You know. What about confidentiality after death then? There's nothing in our law which says that confidentiality ends at death. There's nothing in the law which rules it out. But there's nothing in the law which says that confidentiality continues after death. But you could, uh, you know, people would argue that if you read the law the way it is worded, it does not imply that confidentiality ends after death. It does not imply that at all. Whose consent should be taken is another question. Um, in this instance and and somehow the Indian patriarchal notion that consent should have been taken from the parents only is completely wrong. The, the Mental Health Care Act very clearly says that cons- in, in, in case of Mental Health Care Act, it's very clear the consent has to be taken from a nominated representative uh-huh. and that could be anyone. You know, that that is not necessarily the relative. That is somebody you as a person have chosen. Now, if you haven't chosen anybody, then you have different grades of who can be, uh, you know. So clearly the uh, the consent issue is whose consent. The Mental Health Care Act is very clear on that. One of the justifications was to sort of um, talk about mental health with more nuance because it's been completely blown out and it's being uh, not, you know, not discussed properly in the media uh, and just yes. in general. So the justification was to, you know, talk about this diagnosis, talk about mental health and sort of normalize it. I I don't think that normalizing conversations on mental health justifies breaking confidentiality. That's a very clear thing. You You can normalize conversations on mental health in many other ways. One of the things that has struck me as being a problem is that everyone has suddenly got particularly concerned about confidentiality and the implications on people after that particular program that was aired when the counselor talked to uh, Barkha Dutt on her program. Okay, that is what everyone is suddenly... That is like, to my mind, that is not completely the whole picture. Uh, There has been all kinds of random uh, revelations being done by the media not quoting sources or saying unnamed sources. Uh, there have been all kinds of things that other TV channels have been running, uh, newspapers publishing, and nobody bothered about confidentiality then. That's true. And I understand that people are concerned because now the confidence, this is about a therapist talking and so it has, it's at a different level. Mm-hmm. But the point is that it, that should not be seen in, in, in exclusion. You know, it needs to be seen that there has been a whole chain of events leading up to that. Mm-hmm.